here today to participate in a protest against MVP Insurance Company, which was organized jointly by a national group for mobilization for health care reform and regional groups who have been fighting for better health care uh, practices for quite a while. This was a day of action. There was a protest in front of the building uh, where MVP's offices are. There was, were also people inside the building who wanted to deliver a letter to MVP, which a letter that lists the um, the, and the things that they have done to deny people ca uh, care and payment for care. And these things were not just a matter of protesters saying this was done. The list of uh, problems with MVP as an insurance provider was a result of uh, a New York State investigation of their practices in which they were convicted of all of these things. I was inside with four people who had decided that they felt strongly enough about this to be arrested and um, there, were, there were many, many, many police cars and police on horses at the MP, MVP building, uh, essentially the security people told me and the people who were going to be arrested that they had to leave the building or rest, risk arrest. Essentially, essentially we were all having a cup of coffee in the public coffee shop and nobody was doing anything or threatening anybody at all and in fact what they wanted to do was just deliver this letter to the MVP offices. But the security police said that the owner of the building, since it was private property, wanted them out of the building and they knew that they were with the protesters who were outside and therefore they didn't want them in the building and they could not deliver the letter. So people asked if they could just stay and finish their cups of coffee. They were not doing anything at all and this is a public restaurant. <laughs> And um, the security people said that they would call the police and arrest them. They did. They arrived. Ten policemen came in, plus the six security policemen. And they arrested these four very peaceful people who were still drinking their coffee. I'm involved in this because I know three of the 46 million people who don't have health insurance. One of them is my sister who worked as a scheduler, a surgery scheduler in a large hospital. When she lost her job at age 60, she had just been to the doctor for a backache that she had. Even though she got other jobs and worked again, she could never get insurance again because it was a pre-existing condition. Her back got worse and worse until she got to the point where when she fell asleep, she would cry and whimper in her sleep. And finally, her doctor told her that he knew how bad it was and that he would go to Brazil with her and do surgery in a hospital where he had surgery rights in Brazil because he knew she couldn't stand the pain anymore. As a matter of fact, that was when she was two weeks away from Medicare. She lasted another two weeks and got surgery when she got Medicare but it was five years of excruciating pain. And she's just, the other two stories in my family are even worse than that. One of the people is now dead. The other one is my brother, who's 62. He lost his job in the financial meltdown. He lost his house, he cannot get another job. He has no health care. We need decent health care in this country. And what I want to ask people, all these people who are talking about socialized medicine, is this. If you had the option tomorrow to get Medicare now instead of when you were 65, would you take it? Well, I'm here, uh, I'm concerned with uh, the quality of care uh, being, being uh, brought, incorporated in uh, health care reform. There's a lot of different ideas out there that uh, are good ideas, but they're not given much attention. Like uh, one thing is the uh, a checklist that they uh, want to incorporate in hospitals, so that doctors follow a checklist when they do surgeries and any ICU care. Uh, that is is 
is, is voluntary. It's not mandatory. It should be voluntary. It should be mandatory. But uh, they, um, there's a lot of resistance to it. Yeah, my son uh, uh, passed away uh, four years ago. And there was a lot of questions involving, you know, his care. So we just sort of made it a point to uh, become more active. Well, I'd like to tell them that they should listen to the patient advocates' voices that want strong uh, quality of care, the issue of quality of care addressed properly. And the, and the safeguards that have been brought out to be implemented. We're protesting because we feel that too much of our health care dollars goes into insurance company profits and not into care. We feel that the system is broken and that a for-profit health care system will not work. We wanted to um, let MVP know that people are concerned about insurance companies and the way they are um, using the money that we present in premiums. The premiums keep going up and people can't afford the health care. And so we felt it was important to send this message to um, our local insurance companies. Was One of the um, central insurers in the Rochester area and we have a number of um, complaints about their policy and den of denials and the increase in premiums and we felt that this was one of many insurance companies that are contributing to the problems in our system. We protested that. You know, we, we thought, I mean, other people were sitting around tables, why couldn't we sit around the table? So, yes, we did. We protested when they, when they uh, said we should leave. Uh, they said, you know, this is private property, but we had just purchased coffee at, at the uh, stand, and, you know, it was, seemed like it was our right to be there. And we weren't causing any problems. They said they didn't like our t-shirts. Yeah, first. yeah, that's right. They did, and but... Then they, then they, they said they didn't like your t-shirts? T-shirts, yes. Yeah. But in fact, when they first started telling us to leave, we all had our coats on and our t-shirts were not at all visible. Yeah, that's true. So after we took our coats off, then they started saying they didn't like the t-shirts. My name is Douglas Turner, and I represent uh, Alfred New York uh, Single Payer Coalition. And I'm here because this is the most important issue for this country at this point in time, that everyone in this nation have health care coverage and have access to health care. And with the insurance companies involved, you don't get that. You do not get that because they deny service constantly on whims when medical service is too expensive for their bottom line. Now I have a heart condition and I have to occasionally use nitro spray. And when that happens, uh, I'm so much better than I was before. I don't have the angina. If you don't have health care insurance, you aren't going to be able to afford this little vial of medication. It is out of your financial reach. And insurance companies balk at providing it to you anyway, and you have to try several times before you get it. So those people without health insurance are at such a disadvantage. 
that I'm here and willing to be arrested uh, to make sure that other people get health care in this country. I was arrested. I'm Sandy. I live in Palmyra. And I, I can empathize with so many people in this country that don't have health insurance and are dying 144 every day. And especially because my two daughters who are in their 20s and working cannot afford health care, health insurance. And I'm worried to death every day that something might happen to them and we, we wouldn't be able to afford to. mobilization in um, consolidation with them to try to point out how important it is for us to get a Medicare for all kind of system. We're concerned about the legislation that is being proposed and we feel it's important for people to speak up now with a very loud voice and let our Congressional representatives know that we need a Medicare for all, expanded Medicare like HR 676 or S703 in the Senate so that everyone is included in our health care system and covered fully.